Hey, what's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome to the Rams Skinny here on the LA Football Network, live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Thank you all for making us a part of your day. Hope everyone having a blessed Friday. Excited for the weekend. I know we certainly are. Today is my daughter's birthday, Mia Ray Dyrud, four years old today. Uh, insane that I have a four year old. She'll start TK in August. It's it's wild. It goes fast. Everyone, every dad and mother out there, uh, you know, the cliche is real that time flies by. So enjoy every moment of it. There's my little uh, my little soapbox speech for you. But hope everyone's doing well. Uh, fun show today. Talking all things Rams. Obviously, we're going to get into a big signing. The Rams all pro corner. You know, I know he's had some injuries, so we'll, we'll see if we like it, we love it, we hate it. Talking about that signing, a one-year deal for Tredavious White. Look a little bit at the cap a little bit, and then we're going to talk some draft defensive line prospects. We're going to go round by round, and we can look at prospects that the Rams could have potential at at each round. So we'll get all into that. First and foremost, welcome into my co-host, Mr. Ryan Skinny T. Anderson, what's up, my brother? How you doing? Ah, oh, doing pretty fantastic. Uh, I forgot it. Uh, it was your daughter's birthday, so happy birthday to Mia! And uh, you, you know, opening day is upon us, and 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 spring is here, and just a fabulous time uh, to be a sports fan. I gotta tell you, yeah, it's great. Like obviously, fo- no live football, which is what we do here, but it's draft season, which is like a live sport in itself. Yeah. You got NBA and NHL playoffs starting. Um, baseball, like you mentioned, opening day, March Madness is going on. Sweet 16 is going on right now. So, um, that's a great segue to mention our friends over at bet online. So head to betonline.ag and all of those sports you can win some money on hopefully or lose, but have some fun. Just don't go crazy. Uh, use our promo code believe that's B L E A V gets you a 50%, uh, bonus on your first deposit. So it's believe dot or excuse me betonline.ag promo code believe tell them the guys at the rams skinny sent you well my friend i'm glad to hear things are going well we've got sunshine again even though it's uh, apparently it's gonna rain again this weekend i mean we're just in crazy spring weather right now um but some sunshine at least on the rams secondary at least i think most people think so i will get your thoughts and i'll give my true thoughts but tredavious white formerly of the bills Signs a one year, it's like eight and a quarter million up to 10 million with some incentives and whatnot. Uh, deal with the Rams. So, before I give my thoughts, just your thought on the signing. Were you surprised? I know we, we talked about it two weeks ago that he was visiting and could be a fit. Now joins, you know, Cameron Curl as safety, Darius Williams. So, Rams didn't do anything on the edge in the defensive line, but they, they did do some big signings in the secondary. So, your thoughts on Tredavious White? Yeah, I think on its face, it is a good signing. It's a one-year deal. Um, so if the bottom falls out of this, he he's just not he- can't get healthy, can't stay healthy, isn't as as, as a explosive as an athlete as he used to be. Um, you know, you can move on pretty quickly, which is what you want uh, in that situation. And the upside is uh, is is has been proven. He's all pro. Um, not that long ago. Um, so. You know, uh, they have to invest in their defense at some point. Um, and the way this this uh, defensive backfield is shaping up, I like it a lot. You know, you mentioned Curl. Great addition, uh, you know, from a ca- salary caps perspective. Uh, maybe one of the steals of all the free agency. Uh, Darius Williams coming back. Um, you know, he was, he's not the prototypical guy that I wanted to see in the defensive backfield, but he had a great year and he always proved to be a good, uh, good Rams defensive back, uh, when they're in their Super Bowl run. And then you just add, add another solid piece over there. So it takes, it takes a lot of pressure off of, uh, the young guys, Darian Kendrick and Kobe Durant. Um, so, you know, I'm starting to see what they're doing back there and, and I like it. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I agree on the surface. I think, you know, it's, it's great. It's, it, I'm, I don't want to say I'm surprised. Well, I'm a little surprised he was able to still get that much money coming off the injuries that he's had, um, you know, eight and a half, eight and a quarter is not like, you know, Jalen Ramsey money, but it certainly is more than, you know, a lot of other corners make that have had some success in this league. So, um, you know, looking back, just for those who don't know, uh, drafted in 2017, he's 29 years old. So getting close to 30. So obviously we know how corners drop off on the other side of 30, but he was the runner up defensive rookie of the year in 2017. And then just two or three seasons later, 2019 was his all pro year. And the next year in 2020, 
he was another a Pro Bowl season as well, did miss two games that year, and then ever since has not played a full season. So that's where the concerns kind of come in. 21, just 11 games. 22, just six games. And last year, just four games. Still has had an interception at least one in every single season, even in that four-game season last year. So you can certainly see the upside skinny is there. And so this is one of those really, you know, I don't want to say low risk, but, you know, medium risk for very high reward. Um, and if you, you know, if, if that medium risk hits, you know, unfortunate, it, it didn't pan out. But yeah, you're not like locking this guy in for three years, 30 million or something like that, where he's going to hurt you down the line. Um, it's, I think it's good for him because he can come and prove he can stay healthy and get one more big contract. You know, he'll be, like I said, 30. So most corners get one more deal out of that if possible. So I think it's, it's smart for him to come to the rehabilitation center that is the Los Angeles Rams and, and rehash his image. And, you know, you got Darius Williams coming back who, who's going to know the defense fairly well has had success here. You have, you know, obviously the young guys we've talked about a lot, they drafted last year and we'll, we'll, I'm sure have more draft picks uh, coming in this draft. And then, as you mentioned with Cameron Curl on the back end, and whether they do Russ East or Quentin Lake or whatever beside him, um, there's at least some some continuity there in terms of, of talent-wise and then a guy returning from last year. So, yeah, medium risk, really high reward because if you get even – I mean, if you get even 10 to 11 games – out of Trey White. I mean, he's he plays at an all pro level when healthy. It's just it's all about the health. So certainly has the ability that if he can do that, I mean, that's an upgrade from Akilah Witherspoon if healthy. Certainly. Yeah. And and if you look at it from a drafting perspective, this takes the pressure off that first round pick having to be one of three uh, defensive positions. Now it's down to just one of two defensive positions that we'll, yeah. uh, we'll talk about. So, you know, I think that it's, it's the, it's the right move. Uh, it's not, it's probably not the long-term move. Um, we'll see what happens, but uh, you know, investment in the defense is what we've been calling for, for the last two seasons. Um, uh, and so now it's more important than ever, you know? Yeah, exactly. Speaking of the birthday girl coming in. Happy birthday. Saying, what are you doing? Saying hi? Well, we're on radio, so you gotta you gotta go out. Uh <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think it's um it's great. I would my thought when it came out that he was visiting, and I know he was gonna visit other teams as well, but I had a, a pretty good inkling that he would be a ram. It just guys that you know need a fresh start. This is a great, I mean, almost every player outside of maybe Allen Robinson has come here and had success and then got a paycheck either with the Rams again, or usually elsewhere and got paid. So I think it's a great opportunity for him. And and I think just the defense he fits in potentially. And, you know, we still don't fully know Chris Shula's vision now as the DC, but we have to assume it's going to be similar to what they've done, you know, over the last four to five seasons dating even back to Brandon Staley um, since Shula has been on all these staffs. So yeah, it just felt like a, a good fit for him and a good opportunity. And, um, yeah, we knew they had to invest. Let me ask you this before we move on. And, you know, I feel like we're beating a dead horse here, but you're giving eight to 10 million to another position player when they could have got a Jadavian Clowney who just signed yesterday um, with the Carolina Panthers. Some of these other edge guys that are still out there, like, does it surprise you? It's still, they have done nothing on the defensive front and thrown, I mean, three positions down the back end. So they needed that. That's good but nothing on the front, on the, the front defensive front. Like, does that a concern you B surprise you? Uh, concern and surprise. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been expecting a, a, a an edge rusher, uh, at any time, uh, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, Kyle Van Noy, Michael Dana is still out there. Uh, you know, there, some, something, uh, other than, other than Michael Hoyt. Uh, I don't like to, you know, talk poorly about Michael Hoyt, but he, he isn't, he isn't doesn't have the speed that they need at the edge. Um, and I think that <laughs> I think that, um, uh, you know, Byron Young is is a is a fantastic prospect. But if you go back and you look at his pressures per game, he had 30 pressures in the season. 20 of them come in, came in the first seven games and only 10 in the back nine games. Mm, wow. Um, yeah. Or 10 games, um, or 17 games. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, still developing prospect. And what does that defensive line look like without Aaron Donald, uh, around it? What, what does Kobe Turner's, uh, year look like without Aaron Donald next to him? 
uh, without any and without uh, Coach Eric Henderson, who's now with uh, USC. It's you know, it's only question marks at that position, and uh, and entirely on defense too, because everything's changed. All bets are off now. Mm-hmm. We're, we have no idea what this defense is going to look like because Aaron Donald was so important important to to the defense and uh and we're going to talk all about the the draft but you know the draft is in a place where you land necessarily proven nfl talent you know we've yeah. we've, we've beat that dead horse enough but it's just a question mark um you know i feel a lot better about the secondary i like that now they don't have to draft a guy in the first round they can use a second round uh for a cornerback i think they should add cornerbacks in the draft as well so mm-hmm. it's not done what they're going to do back there, but this is this is a good option for now. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And you know, we've said time and time again, right? Like you don't want to go. You're always going to have need, so I don't want to get mis misspoke here. Um, but you don't want to go into the draft being forced to take a position because of glaring needs. Like obviously you always want to upgrade. You're always hoping these guys can come in and, and really make an impact right away. Like the class did last year. I mean, the, but let's be honest, that was an outlier. Like you can't predict three to four play rookies to have a high impact that the Rams did last year. If you can do it every year, then you're the GM of the century and coach of the century, which, you know, I think listing is a very good one. One of the tops in the NFL. Sure. Um, so absolutely believe that, but, you know, you're, you can't expect to hit at that clip every single year. And so it does concern me. And this is a positive show. Like we like the Tredavious white, white signing overall. Um, but you just don't want to go into the draft with like, man, we have Kobe Turner who had a phenomenal rookie year, but he's going into year two with a new D line coach and without his Batman and Aaron Donald. And that's basically it. Bobby Brown is your other nose tackle starter who also has had trouble staying healthy. Um, they re-signed Laurel Merchinson, we've talked about. I mean, there's other, I'm not trying to disrespect, there's other guys out there, but you're going into the draft with basically one quality starter on the defensive front. And so not saying someone like uh, and I know Jadavian Clowney is more edge than he is defensive front. No, but not saying even someone like that is like the answer to all, but at least you have someone that's played eight years in the league, has some pedigree, can like come in and and adapt and like has has got licked his chops in the league a little bit. I mean, you're going in the next year with I don't have the snap count in front of me. I'm, I'm not, I haven't added it all up, but I'd be curious, skinny T if we added the snap count of the Rams defensive line, it's probably not very high with all of them combined. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, no, it's, you know, they, they not only need a couple of starters at defensive line at the interior. Uh, let's say, you know, they just want to roll with Michael Hoyt and uh, Byron Young again, you know, your, your starters, you just have Kobe Turner there in the interior. That's your starters. And you have no rotation. You really don't have any rotational pieces. You don't have any depth pieces. Uh, You know, there are, there are defensive linemen that only play, uh, um, you know, early downs only come in in third down to, to uh, rush uh, the passer. So, you know, a lot of question marks, it's putting a lot of uh, uh, onus on the offense, just being one of the greatest shows on turf. I guess we'll re <laughs> rehash that uh, nickname. Yeah. You know, th- that's what it's going to have to be, you know, and I understand that the, the, you know, sometimes the best defense is keeping your offense on the field and taking chunks of time off, off the clock by running the ball. And they're kind of setting themselves up to be that way. But I mean, defense wins championships, defense wins in January and playoff games. Um, so, you know, Lots, lot, there's still lots of time. There's still guys out there. Calais Campbell's still out there. I really like that idea, mm-hmm. even though he's 38 probably. Um, and uh, T.R. Tart is an interesting name along the defensive line. You know, Kyle Van Noy is still out there. So there's still free agents to uh, add to this. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not sounding any alarms, but, you know, it's just always been, you know, they've just never invested really in the edge position. Um, you know, they, two, two top, 100 picks they've used at edge um and the last the most recent one was byron young who's doing well the one before that was terrell lewis who uh didn't work out but uh you know you think about all the other guys that they use you know you know uh late late uh round picks on you know chris garrett and uh you know who's who's the super athletic guy last year that's daniel hardy yeah and 
you know, there's there's a whole list of guys like that that have been, you know, second, third, fourth round picks, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth, you know, you know, yeah. all, but they just really haven't used it. And they and they refuse to pay a premium to go out there and free agency or pay a premium to trade for one of the guys. And uh, it's it it's probably the most important position on defense, especially in a post Aaron Donald world. Yeah, especially in a post Aaron Donald world. Yeah, and, and yeah, they haven't in the draft. They've always kind of gone the the route of, you know, go get Dante Fowler, whether go get Lloyd, Leonard Floyd, go get Von Miller, um, and so we kind of thought that was going to be the case this year, right? Like, okay, and then at the time we didn't know Aaron Donald. We didn't know Aaron Donald was retiring, so it was like, okay, they got what thirty million or so in cap space to play with. Like, we assume that they're going to go after one of the the edge guys or a trade. We everyone talked about for two years about uh brian burns and then there was a josh allen optionality out of jacksonville and stuff like that and none of it came to fruition and i think in part you know it, it was just probably a little too rich maybe maybe it was you know teams didn't want to deal edge i mean sometimes too there's maybe that right that uh that fatigue of like man the rams keep getting all the all the good edge guys whenever they want i'm like no we're not going to trade you that guy no we're not making that happen um and then the last thing i'll say about this and we can talk a little bit cap and we'll get into the the defense line on the draft um and we've said this before too, but this move of Tredavious White just a little bit reiterates this thought. And we said, I can't remember how many episodes ago it was, but it seemed like the way free agency has gone, there was a thought from Les Snead and the, and the powers that be that, well, there's no way we can replace Aaron Donald. So let's not even try at that position and we'll just fortify everything else. And if our weakest unit is the defensive line, well, let's just have a damn good secondary and a really good offense. And it seems like that's kind of the approach because they've done nothing on the essence of line. They've signed now three guys in the secondary, Cameron Curl, Darius Williams, bring him back and, and Tredavious White. And then obviously we know what they've done on offense, fortifying the offensive line and, and so on and so forth. So, and, you know, getting tight end and, and, and whatnot. So it seems like that's more the thought process is like, well, no one out there is even going to come close to Aaron Donald. So let's not even try. We'll just uh, fortify the other spots and, We'll hope we hit a home run in the draft again like Kobe Turner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a way to go about it. I mean, if it that works, a way to do it's it. genius. If, uh, if it doesn't and they're giving up 160 yards on the ground per game, then we can say, well, we probably should have signed the veteran on the defensive front. Yeah, 160 yards on the on the ground, but and also like no pressure. Are, yeah. You know, like yeah. <laughs> where's, where's, where's all the pressure coming from? You, you lose 31 pressures out of 131 pressures, just in Aaron Donald and not, not just that, but how he affected the entire defense. So, yeah. um, you know, maybe we'll get what we were asking for and we'll, we'll see Ernest Jones rush the pasture, you know, every series. But again, a lot of his pressures were because Aaron Donald's getting double and triple teams. So he's able to do a stunt up the middle through the gap. Yeah. Not going to have exactly. that without Aaron Donald. Well, so you know that brings up an interesting question. The so Vegas odds maker came 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 out with <laughs> the Vegas odds makers <laughs> came out with their uh, over under predictions uh, for the entire league, but uh, the Rams were at eight and a half. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, eight and a half wins for? Are you going? Are you taking the over? Or are you taking the under? Or are you, or, I'm hammering the over, I think. I mean, even with the concerns on the defensive front, like that just seems very, very low for a team that, again, it, it's so hard because it's like, did they just surprise everyone last year and like everyone just wrote them off and so they just weren't prepared? Or were they really a much better football team than than what the preseason people really thought? And me and you both thought they'd be better than what most people thought, but they have definitely surprised and, you know, how many games they won and, coming this close to winning a playoff game and but losing Aaron Donald I think certainly has a big effect but I don't think it's a a worse season than last year I think you know they should at least be on pace for a similar you know 10 win type season but yeah what do you think I mean I'm hammering the over what do you think I mean I'm leaning I'm leaning over um just because uh, NFC just really hasn't gotten much better I don't think the Niners have gotten better I think they they're going to fare better in the division than they did last year um, and you know, it's, it's very early, uh, to, to say exactly, uh, you know, maybe, you know, uh, you know, Caleb Williams falls to 19, you know, nobody wants to take a swing on Caleb Williams and all of a sudden <laughs> they just have like two quarterbacks in the backfield, you know, anything can happen. Uh, you know, the Max Crosby trade still out there guys, two first round picks. It's and picking some, up steam. 
Let's pick another oh, team. <laughs> yeah. But I'll, I'll say, I've seen a lot of people talk, not necessarily from us, but I've seen people starting to talk about that scenario a lot more. Um, and I will say not to cut you off, but if they take Bo Nix at 19, then yeah, I'm taking the under on eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll go under. A lot of people talking quarterback at 19. I, you know, you know, this is, this is a, a, a digression and we didn't, we didn't plan to talk about this, but you know, that we, we have in our minds that there's this two to three year uh, Super Bowl window that they're shooting for. What if Les Needs mind has just opened up into, into, because in a post Aaron Donald world of what is the Super Bowl window actually look like? Is, are we still in that two to three window? And is, if, if he pulls the trigger on a quarterback in 19, that means he's thinking, you know, much, much longer down the line. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Um, Real quick, if you guys are on radio listening, we've got to take a quick break. So we'll be right back with uh, more Rams talks. So make sure to keep it right here on 1090 uh, ESPN Radio. Yeah, I mean, maybe, yeah, that that is the thinking of, I mean, we'll see. I mean, right now it's all smokescreen season too, so no one really knows anything. And, you know, analysts can say what they think and, and even what they hear, but it doesn't mean that that's what the team is doing. So uh, we hope the Rams are not going quarterback at 19. We believe they will go quarterback at some point with one of their 11 picks. Um, but man, it cannot be at 19 because there's just too many needs right now, as we've been talking about, especially on this defensive line. So I think that unless you have anything else to add is a good segue to talk defensive line prospects. Let's do it. Let's Shall we do right it. In. Yeah. All right. So skinny T just dropped a good, a great article on LAP network.com, basically highlighting one interior. We'll talk edge next episode. One interior defensive lineman in every round. Obviously, the Rams are not taking one every round, so don't mishear us. But if they don't take one in the first round, then who potentially could they take in the second round? If they don't go second, if they wait till the third, who can they do there? They don't have a fourth, so then you wait till the fifth. So just outlining kind of some optionality. And then you can decide, do you like them going there in the first round? Or do you like taking the risk at one of the later rounds and seeing if they can get a Kobe Turner-like production out of a mid-round pick? So let's have some fun with it. Um, I don't think I'll have too much to like counter you. Um, you did the research, you did the list. Obviously I've been looking into this and looking at draft stuff a lot too. Um, but I'll let you kick it off with your analysis on round one. Certainly. Well, and, and the, one of the things I started off my, uh, my draft preview stuff with this article for the Rams, because, um, according to Jordan Rodriguez, her reporting said that, uh, um, less need, is specifically looking at defensive line at every stop. So yeah. that gives would, us, gives us a nice uh, <laughs> peek behind the corner, the, the, uh, the curtain of his thinking of what he wants to do. So everybody's got him up there. Everybody's got this guy as the number one defensive lineman in, uh, in the draft. Um, and he can, there, there's a, there is a world where he does fall to 19. So they're not going to have to necessarily trade up to get him, but Byron Mur Murphy out of Texas, super athletic and a big dude, six, one, 308 pounds, uh, getting some comps, uh, to the, the man, the myth, the legend, Aaron Donald. Cool. Um, nobody expects him to do that, but, um, at 19, I think this is a, a great place to go. Um, led all, uh, Led the team with 45 pressures and topped uh, all football, all of college football with a 19.6 pass, pass rush win rate. So um, definitely a guy that can be a starter right off the bat. Um, so any thoughts on Byron Murphy? Yeah, I mean, this to me, you know, we 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 will talk more edge. And I still, I'll just say off the top, like I was still personally lean edge in the first round. Um, but at interior, this would be the home run pick. I mean, Byron Murphy, I think has all the tools you need production in college comes from like an institution that not downplaying smaller schools or whatnot, but you know, you know, you're getting a little more guys coming out of the, and they were still in the big 10, but you know, entering the sec, but Texas, obviously a, a premier school and a historical college, which doesn't mean everything, but you know, it, it plays some weight into it. So to me, Byron Murphy, I mean, this is, this is definitely, you know, a home run pick. If he were to fall to 19, if they don't have to trade up and get him and he's sitting there at 19, you just run that, run that to the, to the commissioner and make that pick happen. And again, I don't, there will never be another Aaron Donald. There, there's just no way in my opinion. I mean, we didn't think there'd be another Tom Brady and look at that Mahomes. but anyway, that's a different conversation. <laughs> I don't think there will ever be another Aaron Donald, but this is a guy that has potential to be very good. And we can just say this, maybe 
he could have a Kobe Turner like rookie season. That I think could be a good expectation for a Byron Murphy. Yeah, and they'd, they'd be a really fantastic uh, pairing as well. Um, you know, Kobe Turner played a lot of nose tackle. I think you'd, I, I'm kind of interested to see what he's going to look like in the three technique. Um, and Byron Murphy can definitely play a nose tackle, but he can also move out. So you get some fun optionality there. Uh, so my next pick, this is also probably first round, probably trade back if if they're interested in that. He could go early in the second round, but uh, the the Rams don't pick till fifty four in that uh, in that round. So they'd have to they'd have to kind of squeeze him in and in, in the first round. Devondre Sweat again from Texas, but he's the bigger one. They got a bigger one there, six four, three sixty two. Um, this would be kind of a change in philosophy, but like I said, all of that stuff is on the table for the Rams now. They're revamping their defense, so. This is a guy that's just going to be in the middle, um, run stuffer, just pushing guys around. um, And, you you know, he's going to absorb some of that kind of uh, uh, attention that Donald would get just because he is so massive. You just can't move him. He's not going to be moved by one offensive lineman. So um, that that's kind of why I would go for that. Again, you would move you. He would be your true nose tackle. um, And that would allow Kobe to kind of move around. So, yeah. Yeah, it shows if you have two interior D linemen that are potentially going to go in the first round, you, you can see why Texas made the the college football playoff um, at that. So anytime you have multiple guys in the first round, that usually bodes well for your season, or at least should, unless it's just horrible coaching or the other positions are so bad. Um, but this, yeah, this would be another, I think, good pick, especially if you're able to move back a little bit, you know, go from 19 to 25 or something and still able to get him. Um, you'd feel really good about that. And like you said, the size and being able to add that, that meat to the defensive line might be necessary for what they need. I know Bobby Brown is kind of your, your nose right now. And, you know, I think there's still a lot of potential with Bobby Brown, but unfortunately just hasn't been able to stay on the field, whether it's health or, or being scratched or whatever it may be. Um, And he doesn't have Eric Henderson, who was essentially the guy that drafted him. I mean, he was the guy that really wanted Bobby Brown at the time. And so, you know, he's a slated starter right now, but doesn't mean they can't draft someone that can potentially be the true nose. Um, the last guy I'll mention in the first skinny, and then we'll go to the second is, um, Jerzon Newton out of Illinois, I think is another potential, um, top first round pick. Uh, you know, according to PFF doesn't have a ton of like natural flexibility. Um, but he is a, 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 you know, big dude can play the three or five technique. Um, so can kind of move, move around the defensive line and gives you some optionality there. So just want to throw his name out before moving to the second round. Yeah. So my pick in the second round was uh, Chris Jenkins. I called him perhaps the second most athletic uh, defensive lineman in in this draft. Um, played at Michigan, 6'2", 300 pounds. Uh, he's just, as you like to call him, a you know bring bring your lunch pail to work kind of guy. There you, you go. Know, he's got the work ethic. Uh, he was captain for the Wolverines, uh, which speaks a lot. Uh, you know, any 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 trench guy that Jim Harbaugh likes that much, like it's my seal of approval. Uh, for that, uh, I I don't foresee him being kind of that the one man wrecking crew of a like a Donald or anything like that. But um, you know, a guy that can take starting reps uh, day one, I think. Yeah, yeah, you said it. Guy with productivity in college. Um, he's got the size, the yeah, lunch pail, high motor guy. Always the fun draft words to say. But, but yeah, that anyone on that Michigan defense. I mean, national title Michigan defense, especially against the run, was so dominant. Um, and you, you mentioned the review of Harbaugh and Jesse Minters, who the bright one, bright young defensive minds in all of football. Now the chargers DC. Um, so this, I think would be another great pick, especially at, you know, you think that 52, they have a good shot. Do you think they'd have to move up from 52 in the second or, or they sit pretty good right there? Um, I, they're, they're in the range, you know, I think, you know, this, this draft is so offense heavy. And it's yeah. going to be interesting to see when the defensive guys start to come off the board. Um, you know, you look at the first round and it's, you know, people are going to be investing in quarterback, wide receiver, tackles, uh, guards, yeah. centers, you know, it, tight it's end gonna, with Bowers. <laughs> yeah. Another, yeah. Tight end in the first round. So, yeah, I think, you know, the possible scoop is the, the Los Angeles Chargers, who also are needy in this area. And wow. they have Harbaugh at uh, at quarter or at uh, head coach, and he's uh, I think they're picking in the uh, 
late 30s, somewhere in there, 37, 38, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. If he so, goes early, it'll be the Chargers taking him at whatever it is, <laughs> 36 yeah. or something. So if they love this guy, yeah, it's it's a, a trade up. But I don't think I don't think it, I don't think he has to. I don't think they they will trade up for this guy. So but just to go over some of his uh, measurables from the combine, uh, 94th percentile in the broad jump. So just an explosive athlete there, 87th percentile in the 40 yard dash. Um, and, you know, and his 10 yard splits in 75. So he's just got some nice explosive, explosive traits to him as well. So always good to see see. that. That's what you want to see. Love it. So, all right. Number third round, I think is a player that I could be wrong, but I feel like a lot of fans would be pretty excited about this player. Um, and I believe he visited the Rams or at least uh, met with the Rams. Well, I guess wouldn't have at the combine because the Rams don't go to the combine, but had some relation with the Rams or whatever. But anyway, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, uh, Braden Fisk out of Florida State. He transferred from Western Michigan, and he was really good at Western Michigan, had really good stats, and then he moves to a higher level of competition, and they stay the same. So Love to see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, sim- similar uh, lunch pail guy, uh, strength, Grit doesn't wear gloves. Everybody oh. likes to point that out. He doesn't wear gloves as a defensive lineman, which is which is pretty rare. I don't know what it means, but it uh, it says something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the guys that don't wear the face masks in hockey. You know, it's like, what do you? <laughs> yeah, I guess like they're there to help you. Like just you know, you can wear them. It's okay, but yeah. maybe feel he gets better feel with the old digits. I guess without anything covering them up. Throw the guys around. Yeah, yeah. explosive get off and uh, sheer strength. You know. It's, that's what that's what his game's all about and uh you know n- another relentless motor high motor guy um uh so yeah um let's, i don't have his measurables pulled up right now but uh not a huge guy but uh certainly a force in the middle yeah just about what 300 pounds probably could definitely put on um you know a little bit more weight once getting into the nfl but reminds me, not not the same size, but you know, has similar kind of vibes like Gray Gaines, right? The Rams were able to get no. in the fourth round. Um, he is six four, so it gives you good height. Like I said, route two ninety five or so. So you know, I would expect his NFL playing weight to be closer to probably you know three ten, depending where they want him. If they want him more on the the defense defensive edge, like a three tech, or if they want him as a true one or zero tech, um, that'll probably obviously define what his his weight would be. But yeah, I mean. Great explosive get off, which is what you want from that that position. So Braden Fisk, I think, is a guy that's getting a lot of kind of uh, excitement around the NFL, and uh, I think he'd be fitting good in the Rams uniform. Yeah. So round round five, I've got Mason Smith. There's two A's in that Mason. Um, nice. He's a he's a really good, uh, intriguing prospect. Good size and speed uh, kind of guy. He's not he's not super fast. He's uh, five five point uh, oh. Um, 40 yard dash, but six, six, 306 pounds, uh, you know, it's kind of similar to, uh, Trevante sweat, uh, where he's, you know, just big in the middle, you know, obviously he's not quite as big, but, uh, you know, you get both size and speed, uh, with this guy. So, um, you know, I think, you know, probably we're, we're getting to the place where we're, uh, talking more depth rather than, than starting talent here. We skipped around four because the Rams, somehow don't have a pick in round four yeah odd yeah <laughs> odd i don't know how that happened <laughs> um yeah no i like this again um six six three oh six that you mentioned so at, at this point you're drafting for upside and then if you can develop and and you know get a a guy that is unexpected then that's great in round five which obviously one of the best ones of last season came from the fifth round in Puka Nakua, different position, obviously, but um, yeah. So if you're able to to get any kind of production and, and growth and stuff, then that's great. So I think this is a, a solid pick in the fifth round coming from LSU. Um, and with the size that he has, you know, you just, you see what you can get out of him. Yeah. Uh, six round of, out of Auburn, Justin Rogers. This is just a play for play for bigness. Six two, three 330 pounds. That's all I got on this guy. Yeah. (laughs) Big boy. You know, SEC guy, you know, any, anybody that can play defense in in there, um, you gotta, you gotta like that. Um, and you know, more of a run stopper than a pass rusher early down guy. Uh, again, depth, this is a depth piece. So I think if you're, if you're picking fifth, sixth, seventh round here, you also have to have another plan, uh, up front. 
yeah, you know, if he's able to get on the field, this is a guy that, yeah, he's a, he's a run stuffer, hole plugger, but you're also basically saying, hey, we're going to use you as a decoy to get Kobe Turner more pressures. And whether that's, you know, doing different stunts or, or twists where Turbo's running around, or you're just filling a gap and hopefully taking the center and the guard away. So Turner's one-on-one, um, that's kind of what you utilize him for. So, you know, that, that's the game within the game of what you use. It, it, it's a chess match and he may not be a guy who's going to get you a bunch of sacks and get pressure himself, but if he can take on two guys, his own and free up a guy at a one-on-one matchup, then that's kind of all you can ask for, especially for a six round pick. Yeah. So to uh, wrap it up, I got uh, Keith Randolph jr. From Illinois. Uh, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's actually a bit more of a, te- a technician, um, which you don't see a lot of uh, this late. Uh, doesn't bring a lot to the table in terms of uh, pure athleticism. Um, but a, a decent size, um, and you know, he's he's able to shed blocks and and kind of get some penetration. So this is a guy that his upside is actually in the in the pass rush. There you go. So you get kind of a little difference from from all of these guys in terms of what their their best ability, which obviously is what you're going to see in the NFL draft. So, um, you know, in the seventh round, you're literally throwing darts. So you're just uh, hey, if we get a guy that has good size and we think we can coach him up. And we'll see. And if 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 it hits, great. Um, I'm trying to think. When was the last solid seventh round pick the Rams have taken? I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. So, like I said, the 2020 class, they're gone. No one in the 2020 class. And I think they had three seventh round picks that year. Um, so I'm trying to well, think. Well, Ethan, Ethan Evans, our punter. There you go. That's a solid <laughs> one. Russ East, seventh Russ rounder. Russ seventh. That's right. I forgot oh, ben, ben, ben Skoranek. Benny Scro, you know, I mean, jury's out on him. He didn't do much. He was like a lot of hype going into last year and then didn't do much at all last year. But hey, he's on the team. So that's great. Captain of the special teams. Which is important. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's what you that's what you want out of your seventh round picks. Now you're probably not going to get a big time special teamer when you're looking at a defensive interior lineman, but you know, you got you need guys to block on the punt, rush the passer on the punt. So there yeah. you go. Uh, Another thing I forgot to mention about Keith uh, Randolph is he was a, also a team captain. I always love that. That I, I remember reading years and years ago that that's what, what one of the things that uh, Bill Belichick always uh, uh, sought after in 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 the uh, draft. Which you know sometimes his drafts work and sometimes his drafts aren't so great. But uh, you know <laughs> he had a couple of good ones and a couple of really bad ones. Yeah, um, but that's a, that's a different conversation. So um, let me ask you this as we wrap up. Um, looking kind of at this list and, you know, this is obviously one player in each round, like things are going to go way differently, most likely, but when you kind of look at this list, do you feel like the Rams need to go first round, get one of those first round potential guys, or do you feel good enough about, you know, the second, third, fourth round guys that, you know, maybe they can wait, go edge or, or best player available at 19 and, and take one of the guys in the middle rounds. Man, it's tough because I'm leaning toward they need to get somebody in the first round, um, just because they they need starters in there, and in, unless they do make a play for Tier Tart or Clays Campbell, um, you know, first round is where it, you know I think that's where they are now. Do I feel like they should trade up to go get um, to go get Murphy? I'm on the fence about that one. I, I it's it's a tough sell um, just because. You know, you're you're still in the middle rounds. He is the best prospect, but you know, can you find a starter somewhere else that isn't going to cost you a bunch of draft capital? So I think second and third mm-hmm. round is a lock. So I think if Chris Jen- Jenkins does fall at that point, you got to get that guy. Um, yeah, you know, I think you can. I think you can get starting reps out of him and Braden Fisk too. You know, both those guys are scrappers and 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 fighters and and can help you in the pass rush and in in run def, in run defense so um that's that's kind of where i am where where do you fall in that in this conversation yeah similarly um like what i would do which we know less needs probably going to go offensive tackle or something completely different but what i would do is basically i'd have my top 3 d tackles and top 3 edge guys first round grades or top 2 maybe and whoever's there at 19 if it's one of the edge guys and one of the D tackles, I feel good about either one then. 
um, because we need both those positions. If it's no D tackles and two edge guys, great. I'm going with one of the edge. If it's no edge guys and one D tackle, I'm going with the edge. So I'm basically taking three to four players of those two positions and saying we are drafting this position. Now, if they all get taken, well, then that's when you know, hell really breaks loose and, and you really got to get, get a little creative there. And then, and then you go with, you know, what you say, getting a, a Fisk or someone in later rounds, hopefully. But for me right now, it's got to be edge or D tackle in the first. I'm fine either way. We'll talk about the edge scenarios on the next episode. So we'll dive in that more. Um, but either one of those, I think has to be the pick at this point, unless again, in the next three weeks, they do add, you know, a, another vet to the line, then it gives you some flexibility and you can have a little more malleable um, draft board. But for me, it's got it. You, you got to pick your three guys at those positions and say, okay, it, this is what we're doing. Unless somehow all three or four are gone. So Layatu Latu and Byron Murphy available at 19. You're oh, going, oh, oh. you're going Latu. I, if Murphy's at 19, like they don't have to, I don't, if it's like, obviously this is a perfect world, but if it's like, do you trade up and get Murphy or do you sit at 19 and take Latu? I'm going Latu. If you're at 19 and both are there, I might lean Murphy. Um, it's close. I love Latu. I think he's going to be a really, not just because he's UCLA LA guy. I think he's going to be a really, really good pass rusher in this league, but just the hole you have on the interior. I think Murphy would almost be a must if he's there at 19. Like it would be silly to not take him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement with you there. I think that Murphy's a, a definite starter right off the bat. Just put him in there. And I think that Latu is going to take a little bit of time to find his stride. Definitely a starter, though. Yeah, yeah, I think Mark. Yeah, I think uh, Latu starts right away. I just don't know if he's going to be like starting getting double digits of sacks as a rookie. Yeah. Whereas Murphy's going to have, again, not yeah. like double digits of sacks, but he's going to have production from the interior that you need with no Aaron Donald. So instant impact. Yeah. Instant impact. Both, but both would be ecstatic but we'll talk edges next week because that's all the time we got here on this episode of the ram skinny for everyone hanging out on radio thank you so much if you're on lapnetwork.com or the rams lap youtube page we appreciate it make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for skinny t i'm ryan Dowd. everyone have a great weekend talk to you all here in a couple days 